After a year and a half in the planning and months of shooting, Danny McCaskill's brand new film Imaginate finally finished. In this exclusive programme, we take a look behind the scenes of the most ambitious riding film that Danny has ever attempted, an extraordinary and unique project that has pushed his riding skills to a new high. It's kind of really blown into something quite ridiculous, so it's, it's crazy. <laughs> Danny McCaskill spent over a year preparing to shoot his brand new riding film. The sheer scale of the project was unlike anything he'd attempted before. The concept remained a closely guarded secret throughout, and while the huge set was being built, the Glasgow location was in lockdown. But with filming nearly complete, for the first time, an outsider was invited to enter the secret world of Imaginate, the first person to explore Danny's hitherto unseen world. Danny's nuts. He'll try some crazy stuff. So I've got no idea what is going to be in here. I know that a lot of work's gone into it. So I'm looking forward to going inside. Um, I'm expecting some colour, um, crazy obstacles. Danny's got a big imagination and some things that take you upside down, maybe. Take Danny upside down, I'd like to point out, not me. Um, lots of different colours. Lights. Oh, I know he likes lights, actually. I remember a long time ago, he said something about, he loved, um, what was the video he said he really loved? Billie Jean, maybe some squares that light up. <laughs> I don't know, something like that. Maybe a giraffe, I don't know. It's gonna be amazing. I can't wait to get in there, so I'm gonna have a look. Yes, yeah, it's, it's amazing. I can't really take it all in at the moment. Here he is. Hello. Hey, How's it going? I'm good, man. I'm Thanks for coming up. It's Thanks good. for having me, man. Look this at is, it. This is the project. But basically, I mean, the whole <laughs> concept is that when I was younger, I used to, you know, you used to hop oh, the cutlery yeah, around. Yeah, 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 yeah kind of fruit bowl. So it was Mine all... was a fruit bowl. See, my 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 arena would be fruit. Oh, really? We had this little fruit bowl <laughs> with fruit in, and I used to move the fruit around. But I, I used to ride the bowl and go out and in. So I guess yeah. this is where you're going. That's, with pretty, it, yes. that's pretty much yeah. what I was doing with this. You know, you always thought, um, it'd be, wouldn't it be great if that stuff was giant or you were tiny that you could ride yeah. the things? So. The scale of it is sort of, fr sort of frightening, actually. Show me around. <laughs> I don't even know uh, where. You might have heard in the grapevine that there's a loop. Is I've... it scary? It looks so scary. <laughs> uh, when, you, when you actually, well, for the first time, it was pretty scary, but then once you get used to it, it's, it basically, it's, leave... it's like you don't leave the ground. All you do is you basically drive into it as fast as you can and kind of just follow that line and <laughs> it's you fine. You are a head coach. Look at that. Go on, son, have it. Ooh. That was amazing. <laughs> Pretty much what I'm doing every day at the moment. And you were like, way. I'm gonna go do it again. Due to the complexity of the production and Danny's ambition for the riding. Imaginate began shooting three months earlier and would take nearly 60 filming days. The first challenge Danny and director Stu Thompson were to capture focused on combinations of building blocks and ramps, reaching over four metres in height. The mini kicker step up was quite a challenging line. I'd never actually used the mini kicker to go up anything that kind of height. It's a really cool setup, slightly out of my depth. I just don't ride ramps. This I'm the trials and I just ride drop to flat, so it should be a fun day. I'm so used to flipping trying to really like pull up on the bike. Whereas now I'm having now I'm really like 
I'm having to kind of go, like, just let the bike go up it, really. Right, there we go. I was definitely struggling to kind of try to get my brain sort of tuned in. I, I knew it was well within my capabilities, like easily, but um, yeah, I was really, really, really struggling. Nah, it just pisses me off, because I know don't like it's, don't it's, don't it's it easy. Don't if I was saying, I don't know how it does. <laughs> Through your shit. Not stoked. Come through your shit. Mm. Nice. Let's go. Conquering the mini kicker step up eventually proved to be as much of a mental challenge as it was physical. On that particular move, I actually had to put headphones in to try to blank everything else out to get into my own little world and to get it done. But it's good. I mean, I think that's actually one of my favourite clips in the video. As filming progressed, lines up and over super-sized toys were successfully negotiated. But beyond the huge twister spinner and a giant Rubik's Cube stood one of the biggest scaled-up toys of all, which also provided one of the shoot's biggest dramatic twists. One of the cool things with obstacles we had was a tank. But unfortunately, on the second day we had the tank, I had a little bit of a fall off the barrel. I fell maybe about six foot or seven feet, maybe on top, off the top of the wheel, but onto my back onto concrete. Um, we all had it. It was a bit of a scary moment, actually. And to be honest, it's probably, probably the worst crash I've seen him have. First, he was just, he was just like trying to breathe, and he was clearly really, really badly winded. But then, about sort of five or six seconds into it, you could just see him kind of, he shook a little bit, and then he just went drifting, like went unconscious. But he came round about, you know, he was only, he was unconscious for not even ten seconds, and he came round again and was winded. <laughs> You know, and typical Danny, he just sort of, he sort of came round and he finally got a breath in, then he went, oh, that was the weirdest dream. And then, he, and then you know, he got up and you know, a minute later, he's like, shall I do it again? That's what happens, isn't it? <laughs> if you do it, do a tail whip drop off a gun turret. <laughs> On the falling off the tank, it kind of leaves me sort of slightly stronger mentally, I think. Um, it's quite nice. If you have loads of niggly little falls that you break stupid bones on, you know, it can kind of get to you that you always injure yourself when you fall, but I'll have plenty more falls like that on this project. And guarantees. It's been a long, long, difficult process. And I think hopefully it won't show in the film, because hopefully when you see the film, you'll see the fun side of it and Danny's crazy imagination. Um, but it's, been, it's not been easy getting there. With filming well underway, and Danny achieving more and more elaborate tricks. The whole team prepared for the grand finale of the film, which would see Danny not only take to new heights, but ride them upside down. Today's the money shot, but we're trying to get the loop rhythm. Um, we're doing a backflip out, out of the wall earlier onto the dandy. Yeah, it was pretty rad. And then it's basically the next thing's the loop, which is kind of a big unknown to everyone because no, well, nobody here has ever done one. Not many people have. Yeah. With the mats in it, it looks very doable. I'm so excited, to be honest. This has been a long time coming. It's loop day. Yeah, Danny's going to try the loop. the way you loop the loop. Oh, can't believe it. I'm pretty pleased. It actually feels really, uh, it feels really comfy. Should we just, should we try yeah, one? Yeah, let's do, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. can't believe it. It's been kind of in my dreams for the last like a month or so. I've been literally thinking about this all the time and not knowing it's going to happen, so... Oh, I'm stoked. With filming of the supersized toys nearly complete, elsewhere in Kelvin Hall, attention turned to shooting the opening of the film. 
Here, on a human-sized replica of the giant set, a young Danny McCaskill would begin the journey into Danny's imagination. Um, what we've built is um, young Danny's bedroom, where young Danny's imagination begins to run riot with all of these amazing stunts and all of these strange toys. And this bit of the film was actually the last part of the concept to fall into place. He always knew he wanted to have weird and wonderful things like racing cars and trains and tanks. But the bedroom idea was the last bit of the, the puzzle. Um, and so we had to then build a bedroom set and actually put that into the story. My big moment, yes. <laughs> We've got Danny's mum here, playing Danny's mum. That's going to be a surprise. Okay. <laughs> what, okay. what my bit is, you know. Yes. <laughs> Daniel, I'm going to shoot the boots off you if you don't stop mucking about with your bike and come and get your tea. We've got uh, a young actor called Harry, who's brilliant. Yeah, a little bit of a, a likeness to a younger Danny. I'm Danny's a younger version of himself, like thinking about what he's going to do when he's older and, and what he does do, like, eventually. It's really exciting. I enjoy it. I think what people don't realise, and Danny would never give himself the credit for it, is that um, all these ideas kind of come out of his, his crazy brain. And, you know, he is um, an artist as much as he is an amazing um, athlete. With more and more successful lines in the bag, only one trick had thus far eluded Danny, and he was determined to land it before they wrapped filming. It was about five o'clock, something like that, on the last day of filming. And um, basically, we're, we're trying to finish off a line that's pretty much become Danny's nemesis. And, and it's like we've tried to shoot it, and I think this must be like the fifth day or something we've tried throughout the, the duration of the shoot. And every time, like, it, it's just not happened and it's, it's built up to be, become something in his head, like, um, through the whole initial filming and the build-up to it, the thing that was probably the most, giving the people the most concern was the loop, the loop. It's been completely ironic that it's, it's the thing that's come, the, the one thing that's come easy in this whole project has been the loop, it's the thing that's just happened. But everything else is just taking a long time, so, but now we send them off to do the loop to try and cheer them up, like. It would be so good today to get it done because I think it would, it would finish the project exactly how we want to finish it as well on such a high. But I mean, you just don't really know. It's a complete mental game, it's not even physical anymore or, or can he can or can he do the trick? It's like it's can he get past what's going on in his head. So but everyone in here has got more confidence he can do it than he has really. Everyone knows he can do it. For the, is it good enough for the clip? This clip is good enough. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I was coming in today um, thinking to myself, I think we should just leave this because I knew I knew I was going to have a meltdown trying to do it. But, um, but then I realised uh, that we needed to use the five of I thought we'd use it for something else. Then I realised we need to use this card. Every time I play cards now, I'm going to look at that. I'm going to look at it and be like, Ugh. Definitely didn't think it was going to actually, actually happen today. but. It's good. It's cool. I'm so I'm actually totally worn out. It's kind of it's like disbelief to be honest. But it's so cool to have everyone here. Um, the party's just about to get started. But uh, yeah, I'm so glad it's finally this thing's finally done. Finally done. <laughs>